the challenges, the benefits. The autonomous truck represents both as it maneuvers into the marketplace. The engineers are confident that in spite of questions about when this will happen, they can get it working safely sooner than most people realize. I think that you will see the first vehicles operating with no one inside them moving freight in the next few years. And then you're going to see that expanding to more freight, more geographies, more weather uh, over time as, as that capability builds up. We're talking like less than half a decade. He already has a Fortune 500 company as a client, shipping appliances across the Southwest. He says the sales pitch is straightforward. They spend hundreds of millions of dollars a year shipping parts around the country. We can bring that cost in half, and they're really excited to be able to start working with us, both because of the potential, uh, the potential savings from deploying self-driving, uh, and also because of all the operational efficiencies that they see. The biggest one being able to operate 24 hours a day. So right now, human drivers are limited to 11 hours by federal law, and a, a driverless truck obviously wouldn't have that limitation. The idea of a driverless truck comes up often in discussions about artificial intelligence. Steve Vaselli is a sociologist who drove a truck while researching his book, The Big Rig, about the industry. This is one of the most remarkable stories in, in US labor history, I think, is you know, the decline of, of unionized trucking. The industry was deregulated in 1980. And at that time, you know, truck drivers were earning the equivalent of over $100,000 in today's dollars. And today, the typical truck driver will earn a little over $40,000 a year. And I think it's an important part of the automation story, right? Uh, why are they so afraid of automation? Um, because we've had four decades of rising inequality in wages. And if anybody is going to take it on the chin from automation in the trucking industry, the, the first in line is going to be the driver, without a doubt. For his research, Vaselli tracked down truckers and their families, like Sean and Hope Cumby of Beaverton, Michigan. Hey, Hi. Hope. I'm Steve Vaselli. Hi, Steve. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Great Come to meet you, ahead. too. Thanks. And their son, Charlie. This is Daddy. Daddy and Mommy. But Daddy's not here. Sean Cumbie's truck has broken down in Tennessee. Hope, who drove a truck herself, knows the business well. We made $150,000, right, in a year. That sounds great, right? That's like good money. We paid $100,000 in fuel. Okay, so right there, I, now I made $50,000. But I didn't really because, you know, you get an oil change every month, so it's $300 a month. You, you still have to do all the maintenance. We had a motor blowout, right? $13,000. Right? I know. I mean, I choke up a little just thinking about it because it was, and it was $13,000, and we were off work for two weeks. So by the end of the year, with that $150,000, by the end of the year, we'd made about twenty. dollars $22,000. In a truck stop in Tennessee, Sean has been sidelined waiting for a new part. The garage owner is letting him stay in the truck to save money. Hi, baby. Hey, how's it going? It's going. Chunky butt. Hi, Chunky butt. What are you doing? Believe it or not, I do it because I love it. I mean, you know, it's in the blood. Third generation driver. And my granddaddy told me a long time ago, when I was probably 11, 12 years old, probably, he said, the world meets nobody halfway. Nobody. He said, if you want it, you have to earn it. And that's what I do every day. I live by that creed, and I've lived by that since it was told to me. So if you're down for a week in a truck, you still have to pay your bills. I have enough money in my checking account at all times to pay a month's worth of bills. That does not include my food. That doesn't include field trips for my son's school. My son and I just went to our yearly doctor appointment. I took, I took money out of my son's piggy bank to pay for it because it's not, 
it's not scheduled in. It's it's not something that you can, you know, afford. I mean, like when, <sighs> sorry. It's okay. Have you guys ever talked about self-driving trucks as he? <laughs> so kind of. Um, I asked him once, you know, and he laughed so hard. He said, no way will they ever have a truck that can drive itself. It's kind of interesting when you think about it. You know, they're putting all this new technology into things, but, you know, it's still man-made. And man, you know, does make mistakes. I really don't see it being a problem with the industry because, one, you still got to have a driver in it because I don't see it doing city. I don't see it doing, you know, main things. I don't see it backing into a dock. I don't see the automation part, you know, doing maybe the box trailer side, you know, I can see that, but not stuff like I do. So I really ain't worried about the automation trucks. How near of a future is it? Yeah, self-driving. Um, so some, you know, some companies are already operating. Uh, Embark, for instance, it's one that um, has been doing driverless trucks on the interstate and in what's called exit to exit self driving. And they're currently running real freight. Um, really? In, yeah, on I 10. Shower guest 100 per shower is now ready. Over time, it has become harder and harder for veteran independent drivers like the Cumbies to make a living. They've been replaced by younger, less experienced drivers. So the, the trucking industry is $740 billion a year. And again, in, in many of these operations, labor is a third of that cost. By my estimate, I, you know, I think we're in the range of 300,000 or so jobs in the foreseeable future that could be automated to some significant extent. <laughs> 